On April 25th at 1.13 p.m., our deputies responded to a call of a student with a gun at Cedar Crest Middle School in Spanaway. The deputies were told that the student had flashed a gun at several other people and the school had gone into full lockdown. Deputies were given the name of the student who was reportedly seen with the gun tucked in his waistband. Deputies checked the classroom where the student was supposed to be and he was not there. They were able to locate the student on a second floor hallway and detained him with no issues. No firearm was immediately found and deputies kept the school in lockdown as they searched for the missing firearm. So this hall, which were we so looking? He came, or he rounded that corner right there. Okay. After the suspect was detained, deputies called for canine bricks to help track down the firearm. So this hallway kind of, all right, and there's bathrooms and yeah, stuff along here too? bathrooms down there on the right, which he may or may have gone through. Okay. All right, kids are staying in the classroom, I hope. Yep. All right. All right, let's see if I... Break seat. Dog's got his toy, so what do you think that means? Oh, yeah. Got a boy. Yep. Once the firearm had been located, the lockdown was lifted at 2.16 p.m., which was past normal release time. The school was in lockdown for over an hour. Upon further inspection, this firearm was a realistic airsoft gun, which is still illegal to bring to school or used to make threats. The 14-year-old student was booked into Raymond Hall for possession of a dangerous weapon on school property as well as felony harassment. And one thing I'd say about this BB gun right here, or airsoft gun, it is made by the Glock manufacturer. This is my department-issued Glock firearm and I'd be hard pressed to bet if anybody could tell the difference between these two if somebody was pointing it at them. Uh, our deputies are faced with a lot of crazy things out on the street. Uh, we are worried about people being armed all the time. Having a kid with a firearm like this that looks like a real one definitely does not have its place in our schools. Please do not bring any firearms or things that look like firearms to any of our schools in our county or anywhere else. All right. Now that you've watched the video, uh, I want to tell you about some impacts that I took away from watching all this body camera footage. Uh, the first thing I want everybody to realize is that lockdowns and lockdown drills are way different than earthquakes and earthquake drills. Uh, these are very traumatic incidents that um, could happen at the school. Um, we're prepping for those things and practicing those things. And the kids have seen all sorts of stuff happen at schools across the country. So when their school goes into an actual lockdown, um, it can be very frightening. Um, no one really knows what's going on in the classroom. The staff doesn't know what's going on. They just know that they've been told to lock down from the announcements that have come out over the loudspeaker. So not only is it scary for students, it's scary for the staff and the faculty as well. Um, and it's scary when we respond to, to events going on at schools because we're concerned about your most precious possession, your children, just like we'd be concerned about our children. Um, so I want everybody to remember if there is a lockdown drill at your children's school, please check on them, make sure they're doing well, um, not just physically, but emotionally. Uh, the next thing I want to touch on is that in this incident, there was over 29 deputies, officers, and state troopers that responded. Um, understand when, when we hear something like this, we are all going. 
Uh, no one is waiting to be told if they can go assist another agency with a call at a school. We are all headed that way as fast as we can. Um, so I really appreciate everybody that did uh, go out there and, and everybody that was on their way to help as well. In addition to that, um, the staff did a tremendous job of locking down successfully. Um, there was no one wandering the hallways uh, except for the person we were looking for. And that's exactly what we're looking for when we ask the schools to lock down and when we practice these drills. So outstanding job to the school and the students there. Um, the last thing I really want to touch on is the SRO who's responsible for Cedar Crest Junior Middle School, um, when she got there, uh, you know, she was coordinating everything and talking with the administrators. And after they had calmed everything down and got our uh, kid in custody, she was going classroom to classroom and unlocking doors and talking to teachers and making sure that they were okay inside the classrooms. And when the, um, the teacher told her, when she heard her voice at the door, she immediately felt relieved. She, she knew she could, could just settle down and, and know that she was okay. And it wasn't because it was a uniformed officer at her door, but because it was Deputy Deck, who she knew who she appreciated and knew that if Deputy Deck was there, that everything was going to be okay. Um, and that just kind of speaks to the power of the relationships that our SROs have been building with uh, their schools in all of our school districts. Having this ability to be in the schools and work with the faculty, the students see us, um, when something traumatic like this happens, it just speaks to that that impact that we can have. Um, and so I was really appreciative to hear that feedback. Another thing that they said was that the other SROs that were showing up that didn't belong to those schools, because we practice these lockdown drills as a group with all of our SROs, they immediately recognize all of them. So when they saw uh, Deputy Morrison or Deputy Bielko, again, they knew who that was, they knew that they were safe, they knew that the sheriff's department was there and that we were going to take care of business and take care of all of them. So again, it's just really powerful to know that uh, we, can, we can make that difference in a school, um, that we can provide that comfort just to know that we're there, that we're going to handle it. So uh, that's it for me in Darren's Corner. Uh, we'll see you guys on the next one. Good boy! Good boy! That's a good boy, both of you. Yeah. Good boy. Oh, good boy! <laughs>